okay. Okay. No, I've never been. I, I, I knew about you, and in fact, I think I had talked to you once before oh, yeah. when we was on Woodbridge to try and get, and some some reason or another, we, I did. On Harper. On Harper? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, this is Linda Hunt and the Marketplace Connection. Come and go with us as we visit the seven cultural mountains where you will receive information that would expand your capacity and upgrade your thinking because God wants to give you more. Join me for the next hour as I connect you to the Marketplace. Saturday morning. This is the Marketplace Connection and I am your host Linda Hunt. I welcome each and every one of you for getting up on Saturday morning and following us. We are so excited about this day. We got a lot of snow, but we glad to be here. I tell you, uh, I wouldn't be any other place than being here right now with you and doing what I do, and I love doing what I do, bringing you information from the marketplace, connecting you to the marketplace, and connecting the marketplace to you. And why do I do that? Because I want you to, this year, leap into your destiny. This is leap year. I want you to upgrade your thinking. I want you to expand your capacity. And why do I want you to do that? Because God wants to give you more. You are more than what you have become. So we are looking forward to great things this year in 2020, the year of vision, the year of expansion, and the year of you doing great and marvelous things this year. So we call this the get it done year. This is the get it done year. What you haven't done like in the that. last decade, it's time to get it done. So we are so glad and so thankful today. We have such a special guest. But before, before I forget and introducing her to you, I do want to take a moment to uh, just thank my sponsors, the Northland Chrysler Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. They're at 14100 West 8 Mile there in the city of Oak Park. Please go by and visit them. These are my sponsors. They have been so faithful to me. And so if you are in need of a new car, that Chrysler uh, or that, that Dodge or that Ram, uh, go by and visit them. Ask for the manager, Mike Shanishtai, who is the manager, and go by and get that new car from my uh, sponsors. They're at 141 West, 14100 West 8 Mile in the city of Oak Park. So we thank God for them today. Well, we have a very special guest and a very, very, uh, I think, a subject that is very serious right now. Uh, what is going on? Uh, in the earth right now, uh, we know that this human trafficking is uh, one of the things that has been getting a lot of national attention all across the uh, United States and even outside of the United States. And it seems like it has been a just an epidemic. Uh, there has been such an increase of it. And so we are doing what we know what to do in terms of when things like this happen, you have to be on top of it. You have to be willing to talk about it. You've got to be willing to expose it. And so today I have a wonderful, wonderful guest uh, that, is, uh, that is very much involved in it and those that are lost, those that are broken, those that are hurting, uh, Miss Miracle Norad of the uh, Love Social Cafe, <laughs> Love Love Walk. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, what is it? <laughs> LWSC Community Circle. Okay, LWSC Community Circle <laughs> and uh, House of Hope. And House of Hope. Okay, I got that one right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so we just thank God for you today. Thank you for Ms. having us. Miss Miracle Norad and her uh, accomplice. Uh, board member. Board member. Uh -huh. And tell them your name. My name is Danielle Brown. Danielle Brown. Well, yes. we thank God for you too today. Thank you. And thank God for what you are doing thank and you. how you have just taken the bulls by the horn and jumped in there to uh, try and arrest uh, some of the things that are going on right now in this human trafficking. It is such, I'm telling you, it's just, uh, it's just like an increase. 
Uh, I know it's been going on, and, you know, we called it over the years prostitution mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But this human trafficking as far as uh, young girls, uh, particularly uh, now that are on the Internet, and with the Internet being so widespread, yes. it is so much easier mm -hmm. uh, now for these kind of predators to get in touch with our young girls and um, uh, and even women now, um, you know, and it, it is just such an epidemic that's going on. I mean, you're almost afraid when you go out in the evening at night. You know, I know here, at, you know, during a season, the women were being snatched and, you know, uh, taken against their wheels and mm -hmm. put in cars and things of that nature and so it has really you know gotten to a point where you know we have to talk about it yes, yes absolutely. we have to educate people about it mm -hmm. you know it's more than just talking about it it's about educating people about uh, you know what is going on so they will know how to protect themselves and also know um, some of the signs right yes. you know that mm -hmm. um, that goes along with this thing you know and how we can educate our young girls and our you know women about you know the things that are going on mm -hmm. so I just thank God for you uh, miracle for doing this and you and your your board uh, your husband that is a part of your ministry yes. and <laughs> you know not only is this a uh, a business for her uh, this is a ministry. It is. It's definitely yeah. marketplace ministry. Yes. I'm mar <laughs> you know I love that. <laughs> it's definitely marketplace ministry. God calls us to go out. Yes. And human trafficking is the result of a whole lot of other issues. Mm. Human trafficking is the pie, right, that is made after you got women or young girls who run away, who are dealing with low self-esteem, who are homeless, Right. So those are the issues that we really have to fight in order to take a bite out of human trafficking. Mm. Right. Because the human trafficking is a result of something. Yes. It's a result of something. It's the result of um, lack of love. Yeah. Rejection. Yeah. Rejection. Yeah. Abandonment. Yeah. Right. It, it's the result of um, poverty. Yeah. Right. Because on the flip side of the predators, while they're doing it, they're doing it because it's easy money. Wow. Wow. Right. Wow. It's yeah. easy money. Yeah. Yeah. So if we deal with the issues, then we can take a huge bite out of the pie. Yeah. Just yeah. dealing with the issues. And so one way that LWSC Community Circle deal with the issues is providing housing and supportive services mm -hmm. for youth who are mm -hmm. homeless. Mm -hmm. Because the FBI records that over 100,000 children are trafficked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the number one prey wow. are homeless youth. Whether they are foster care children who are aging out, whether they ran away from home, whether they were lured, they or whether it's happening right while they're still at home, mm -hmm. it's happening to our youth. Mm. And so we have to provide resources for our youth so that they don't become prey. Wow. It's good that we have a lot of resources for the survivors, mm -hmm. but we got to get to a place as kingdom builders pre pre a preventative yes. prevention initiative yes and that's what the house of hope is the mm -hmm. house of hope is a prevention initiative so that these youth don't have to become victims mm. right yeah because if they have a place where they can go and they're safe right and they're loved and they're built up and empowered mm -hmm. and nurtured mm -hmm. then they don't have to fall prey mm -hmm. they don't have to be exposed to sexual abuse or sexual exploitation mm -hmm. or drug abuse or physical abuse mm -hmm. right because they just need their basic needs met yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that's it you know i mean like the you know um, love conquers all things when you love someone or show love for somebody, I mean, that takes away, like you say, the bite out of them going out seeking after, because that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're seeking after love in all the wrong places and all the wrong faces, you know, and they fall, you know, innocently uh, into that because of the fact that they feel like, well, this person is, you know, saying that they're going to buy me. Right, this piece right. of jewelry. Mm -hmm. They're going to buy me a new car. They're going to buy me all of the clothes. See, my, cause my mother or my father's not providing that for me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going with someone that I feel like is giving me some of the things. And, and, and a lot of it is just basic needs. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, food. Basic needs. <laughs> you know, just the I'm, basic needs. That's it. How many kids go to school? I mean, even now I talk to some of the teachers and go to school hungry. Mm -hmm. So they're providing for them, you know, food in the morning because the parents don't get up and fix some breakfast. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or they don't they don't have a tissue, you know, to, when they go to the bathroom. So they have to, you know, the teachers have to buy that. Pencils, 
pencil sharpeners, you know. Simply so providing the basic needs. They're providing mm -hmm. basic needs. Mm -hmm. And so those, uh, you know, young women that are out there, they're looking for somebody to provide for me the way my parents or, you know, or my family is not providing for me. Mm -hmm. And they're seeking it into people that, you know, I mean, their mind is screwed. Mm -hmm. And that's just one group of the young ladies because yeah. there are the group that is raised right. And yeah. they have two family, yeah. I mean, two parent household, yeah. and mm -hmm. they have their basic needs, mm -hmm. um, but they're lured by their aspirations. They're lured simply by their dreams. They're lured by wanting to get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to school and still being trafficked. Mm -hmm. I have spoken to several survivors who, one was trafficked and she was still going home every single day and going to school every single day and graduated from high school. How did she have time? They made time. Instead <laughs> of hanging out later, they did wow. trafficking. Wow. And so it becomes, after, the, after you're lured, or kidnapped, or um, coerced, mm -hmm. or by force. After all of that, then you're groomed for it, and then your 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 mind is broke down to, yeah. so that it becomes a way of life for you. Mm -hmm. And then the struggle after you've come out of it to not go back to it, mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. While you're in it, let's keep it real. You just taught me a way of life, and you taught me to survive. And even though it was against my will at this point, this is what you taught me. This is what embedded in my mind. This is what my brain has developed as right. a way that I can function, right? Yes. as a way that I can make it. And so I survive out of this, but now i got to continue to fight not to go back to it when I get into a place of poverty again. Mm -mm -mm. It's almost like an addiction. It becomes you know. an addiction. Yes. It becomes an addiction because it's rooted. And until that is uprooted, mm -hmm. until there is inner healing and deliverance from the traumatic experience, then it's going to manifest in that person's life one way or another. It mm -hmm. will manifest in fear. It will manifest in mental illness. It will manifest in relationships. It will manifest in not being able to keep a job. It will manifest in going back to the streets because that's what you know. Mm. It would manifest in you becoming the victim, becoming the perpetrator. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it would manifest in different ways. So like I said in the beginning, trafficking is the result of some unresolved issues, some things that we need to deal with. So ra raising the awareness is one, right? We raise awareness, we educate, but we also have to do some healing and re supply some yeah. resources, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, not just to the victims, mm -hmm. but to the predators as well yeah. who hurt mm. you I agree mm. with that. who abandoned you mm -hmm. who sexually abused you at mm. what point did you lose sight of the human value mm -hmm. that it makes it okay for you to sell someone or to buy a child mm. or to buy a body part Right? Because human trafficking is not just limited to sex I know. trafficking. I know. It's limited to labor trafficking. Mm -hmm. it's, right. it, it is also. Right. Or both. Or both. Right. Mm -hmm. it, is also, um, it is also, they sell body parts. Yeah. That's another form of trafficking. Mm -hmm. So they are selling, and I just got, you know, understanding of that not too long ago. On the black market, they are taking body parts and selling it? Yes. <laughs> and that's, that's real. And the, the crazy part is that this has been going on for a well, long, yeah. long yeah. time. Because there was a place, if I'm not mistaken, not too long ago in Michigan that it was a laboratory or something that they raided, and that's what they found. Mm -hmm. There was body, body parts. parts. Yeah, that yeah. they mm -hmm. found that they had been storing there. Yeah. It was also a place in Redford that mm -hmm. they shut down, that it was traffickers there, right in Redford. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know um, I, I had just found this article um, last night where in Disney World, there was a sting going on. 35 men have been busted. Now, they work for Disney. Yeah. Have been hired I saw that. for Disney. Mm -hmm. And here, Disney, a place for where ki uh, children can go. And, um, uh, you know, they're in a, uh, amazement and entertainment and all of all the things. You know, this is a playground for them, in yeah. other words, you know, to, a, uh, you know, to another degree. Right. And here you got people working on the inside that are coercing young girls and, you know, and, and children at that particular time to try and, you know, to meet up with them later. Yeah. And I'm like, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. That is... Um it's not safe. It happens even in your family. One of my uh, mm -hmm. 
one young lady that I mentor, it happened in her family. She was trafficked by a family member. A family member was trafficked? By a family member. It happened, I've talked to another survivor who were trafficked at her church. I talked to another survivor who were trafficked at um, a strip club. It's, it happens. It happens. It's women have been sexually exploited for a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. And it's not just happening to women because it happens to girls, yeah. boys, men, yeah. and women. Right. 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 But women, young and old, are the number one targets. Mm -hmm. Are the number one targets. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do our job as family, as people, mm -hmm. right? As just to love, right? Because hatred and the actions of hatred in the actions of darkness is the absence of love. Mm -hmm. Because how can I hurt you if I love you? Mm -hmm. Right. How can I hurt you if I love myself? Because if I love myself, then I'm going to see you in me. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, that's one of the things, um, Miracle, is the fact that a lot of it is a generational curse. A generational gen curse. Yes. yes. Where you have parents that have been abused and hurt, and some of them even trafficked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so that same thing, you know, happens. They, you know, a lot of them don't even see any problem with it. Okay, so that happened to me. So, all right. So, you know, it's okay. Um, for this happened was generational. And the generational curse is not the victim, not being a victim. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that that's the curse. I believe the curse is being a victim and being silent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, like you said, for so many people, this has happened and it was hush hush. Right. The Absolutely. sexual abuse at home mm -hmm. and the families. Mm -hmm. It's hush hush. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna talk about it. We're mm -hmm. gonna sweep it under yeah, the rug. Right. But Whatever what does that do? Here, it stays here. What does that do? Mm -hmm. It hurts the victim and it empowers the perpetrator. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if I got away with this time, then I could possibly get away with it again. And most of them do. And most of them do. Mm -hmm. And most of them do. And so how do we combat that? By speaking up, by saying yeah. not me. When I ran away from home because I was molested, my mom came and got me. So she saved me from being a victim of trafficking, but no one saved her. Mm. By the time she was in it, she was in it. And even when people tried to get her to come out at that point, it was physical abuse. It was substance abuse. Her mind was altered and she stayed in it for years, mm. for years and did not come out until after we were born. This won't happen to my kids. Yeah. It won't happen to my grandkids. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we here. talk about it. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we talk about it, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? And the truth of the matter is we have to be bold enough to stand up for it, even if it's in our family. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, sir. Even yeah. if it's in our family. We have mm -hmm. to be bold enough to stand up and confront the issue. Mm -hmm. No more being silenced. It's too many of us suffering in silence mm -hmm. and then wondering why um, it's manifesting in our lives every day. Mm -hmm. We got to do something about it. We mm -hmm. turn the other, we, t we turn our sheet, mm -hmm. right? We close our eyes. We don't want right. to see it. Right. We don't want to believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially in the African-American family. Especially. That's just, yeah. That is not something that um, we want to talk about. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's not something that we, we, first of all, we don't really believe in it, you know, and it happened to us and we don't really want to talk about we it. We don't want to talk about you it. Know. So one of the other ways that LWSE Community Circle um, combats this is through our trauma-informed care with mm -hmm. the winning award within punch bowl conversations. So we talk about sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. We talk about domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We talk about suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. We talk about um, substance abuse. We mm -hmm. talk about the root. How did we get here? And we deal with it so we can heal that child within because mm -hmm. all of us have had issues, right. traumatic experiences mm -hmm. that causes us to act or respond a certain way. And so until we can get to a place where we're dealing with that actively, we're going to have hurt people hurting people all the time. Mm -hmm. So our monthly punch bowl conversations are where we can sit and just talk and release and mm -hmm. cry and mm -hmm. pray oh, yes. mm -hmm. and write oh, yes. and mm -hmm. heal mm -hmm. and be free. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there is a war going on within us every single day. Mm -hmm. yes. All of us. Yes. No mm -hmm. one is exempt for it. Not because right. of your race, your color, your age. Right. You're not exempt for it. You're fighting every single day yes. to be a better version of you. You're mm -hmm. fighting with the experiences that you've had and who those experiences have groomed you to be mm -hmm. to wanting to be something else and something different. Mm -hmm. 
it's a fight going on. Mm. And the only way we can win this fight is one through God, right? We need right. to have a relationship with him. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And that and then to to continue to talk about it and heal and get the healing and forgiveness that is needed. Cuz mm. I had to forgive my father. Mm. So it was your father. It was my father. Mm. I had to forgive him. But forgiving him released me from the pain. Absolutely. It released me from the anger. Mm -hmm. And it also empowered me to fight. Mm -hmm. So now I'm fighting. When I, when I see young girls who are homeless, I see myself. Mm. I see my mom. I see we have to make a, we have to do something about it. Because mm -hmm. if we don't do something about it, I'm sorry. I, you know, I tell my kids all the time, if we're not part of the solution, then we're part of the problem. Part of the problem. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Each one of us could do something about it to help so that we don't have more victims of human trafficking. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my sayings is, you know, it takes a village to save the village. Yeah. But the village has to get involved. The village have to get involved. Yes. You know, we, we cannot close our eyes to things that we know, that we see, that we hear and not be willing to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no matter how bad it may sound or whatever, but through that talking, through that having conversation about those kind of things, brings the healing that is needed. Yes. And so many, and like you said, people are suffering in silence because of the fact that they've been so ashamed to talk about yes. some of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are things that happen. I mean, this is a part of life. I mean, it's not, it's, it's an ugly part of life. But it does happen. It does happen. Yeah, and because there are some sick people out there in this yes. world. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Can you imagine, though, the sick people? Can you imagine what they went through to get to that place? Yeah. Because you're not born like that. No. No. <laughs> mm -mm. You're not born like that. It's not even Something natural. happened to that person yes. to make them yes. respond and act that way, mm -hmm. to make them void and dark, to be able to do that to a child. Something happened. And so I pray for them all the time. Right. Yeah. I pray predators. that they be healed. Yes. Do you ever have any of the predators that come through your organization? We have had one person uh, who was a, I guess the word would be pimp, or he mm -hmm. was a person, and I think that was at the event that you came to, where okay. he was um, the person who trafficked other people. But now he's taking a stand against it. Mm. And you know, even sharing how it was, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not always through kidnapping and it's not always through force, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes, like, it's, it's lure. It's, hey, you got prestige, you got money. You, you know what I'm saying? And that looks good to mm -hmm. the young lady. And I can get this from you. And so, okay, and then eventually you do a favor for me. Mm -hmm. And that favor becomes another favor, becomes another favor, and becomes a part of life mm. until you break free from it. Right. Wow. Wow. Well, I just thank God for you and, you know, what you're doing and, you know, and, and the uh, House of Hope um, is the place where, you know, people can come and, and be rescued. Yes. yes. You yes. know, I mean, and that's 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 exactly what, you know, is needed. And how long have you been doing this? We just started with the House of Hope program as our initiative uh, since November. Since November. We just recently um, opened our second home. And okay. so we are helping five, six, six, six youth mm -hmm. and their children. Because some of these young girls have kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're homeless, going from couch to couch or living in abandoned houses, not knowing where they're going to go, not knowing where they're going to eat. And we're just here to help. And we don't have, at this point, have not received any grants. So this has been done I would say 75% out of the board of us coming and putting our financing in, sacrificing our time and our efforts to get this done. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other has been from the support of others, just mm -hmm. believing in what we're doing mm -hmm. and sewing whatever it is they could, even if it's just sharing our page or mm -hmm. sharing what we're doing mm -hmm. um, and getting a few donations in that has helped us because that's our goal. And we want to take it from the city to the state and hopefully to the nation and maybe somebody else can catch on. And even, you know, everybody can't get the big buildings. But one house at a time, oh, yeah. we can mm -hmm. fight it against human difference. trafficking. Mm -hmm. One house at a time. I've had young girls who um, she came in homeless, and she's now in college because yes. we didn't just we didn't just provide her Praise shelter, God. but we gave her the supportive services that she need in connection with other organizations mm -hmm. to help her get into a place where now she's empowered and you know. And we're gonna stay with her because we want to see mm -hmm. her graduate from college. Right. Wow. right yeah. You know. And I remember when we took her to college, her words were, "Miss Miracle." I don't know where I would be if you didn't open the house of hope yes. for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that made it all worth it. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Because 
if we can just say one one person yes yes yes, yes. then all the sacrifices that we made was all worth it it was so mm. worth it but i know that god has positioned us to say more than one yeah <laughs> and yes. we're going to continue to keep yeah. going yeah so you uh, you know want to open another house yeah our plan yeah. and our goal is to have seven by 2023 okay mm -hmm. that's okay. our plan and our goal and okay. I believe it's going to happen. Okay. So what it, and I know because you're in ministry and I know the kind of ministry that you have besides um, doing what you do and you bring an element to it uh, that a woman's shelter. So that I would, I guess would be a difference in you and just another woman's shelter is that you bring an element to it, um, that you bring ministry to it, yes. you bring deliverance to it. Mm -hmm. um, you bring prayer to it. Yes. So, um, you and know, I hold their hand. We hold their hand. Yes. Okay. Because when you've been in darkness so long as a child, mm -hmm. you even though you know to do right, and even though the resources may be right there in front of you, sometimes you need somebody to hold your hand as you go through it because you're stuck in survival mode. Mm -hmm. And survival mode will have you self-sabotaging yourself. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we can't just turn our back on the ones that's not getting it. We have to hold their hand. And we have to pull them and say, this way. Yes. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. the way you go. Yeah. Right? And do it until they get to a place where they know, okay, this is the way I go. Let me go this way. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Every every time we open up the door for a young lady, we open up our hearts yes. to have another child. Yes. yes. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. We check on their school. We check on making them sure they're going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. We we check on them because we, we don't just want to provide them family. with shelter. We become family. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We, we become someone that you can depend on, someone that you can call, and mm -hmm. we're just not going to throw our hands up at you right. when mm -hmm. you don't do what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Because love chastises. Mm -hmm. So we're going to chastise and want to mm -hmm. keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And communicating wow. daily with them, you know, yeah. checking in, making sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. Like more than just, you know, your average person you contact day by day, but with them it's like a consistency. You have to continue to talk to them daily so i'm talking like seven days a week mm. sometimes three times a day right. four times a day five times a day hey what you doing hey i need you you know and just being there meeting their need so that they mm. won't stray out and so they won't go right. backwards what are what is the population age group now so our age group right now is 18 to 23 but we hopes when we're able financially to have staff then we can do mm -hmm. 16 to 23 but without staff, we take 18 years old because they can be more at, in the home by themselves without having someone there to be there with them. Hmm. So 18 to 23. 18 to 23. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, you're, you're doing a wonderful job, um, you know, and it is definitely needed. Uh, particularly, I, I know that I had saw somewhere where even in the schools, they said they have human, uh, they have people that the human traffickers have set in high school to, you know, to lure the girls mm -hmm. in the school. Yeah. That's like, real. Yeah. They're recruiters. Yeah, they're recruiters. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my goodness. So your kids are going to school and you're thinking, okay, they're among their classmates and they're being recruited right in the high school. Right in the mm -hmm. high school by one of their peers. Wow. Oh. So you got to be careful, even with that. Because, and you have to be willing to take a stand and walk away, even if it means not being popular. Yeah. Right? Not being popular. And you can't, you have to be loyal to yourself yes. and not loyal to your friend. Because how many go fall under the peer pressure? And I, I want to be cool with my friends. Mm -hmm. So my friend said, let's go. So I'm going to go. But I'm already feeling some type of way about going. Mm -hmm. But instead of me responding to my feeling and not going, I go anyway. And then we regret it. So we have to be uh, very careful. It, when it happened to me, it was a friend at that time, or peer at that time, who lured me to this place where she said it was safe for me to go. When we did our first human traffic awareness event in 2017, one of the parents that came said that his daughter was trafficked and she would go to school every day. But when she got out, she became the victim and went back to the schools. And she became a recruiter. Mm -hmm. So she went from being a victim to a recruiter right. to then being a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful of our surroundings and the people that we love. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the right. truth of the matter is the people that we're supposed to trust, we can't. We have to watch for the signs. We have to pay attention. And we have to be willing to just say no and speak up. If we can. If, yeah. If and when we can. Right. Say no and speak up. Right. Does a lot of the girls, are they, uh, you know, come from fatherless homes? Is that 
some of uh, or a big portion of the pro uh, problem where you have a lot of the girls that don't have that kind of uh, relationship with their father, the kind of love that a man can give them, and so they seek it out in other, you know, men. Do you have that? Um, uh, most of the girls that we have at home are from fatherless homes. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I wouldn't box it into that. Okay. Because like I said, there are two family households that mm -hmm. this is happening to where the father is present. Mm -hmm. However, I do believe that the absence of the father, the absence of a good father. Right. Exactly. Plays a part. Right. Mm -hmm. The absence the, or the presence of a good father mm -hmm. or a father figure. Mm -hmm. Um could be a preventive initiative, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because of that one, the men set the standard, yes. mm -hmm. right? And so if men will set the standard of how we are supposed to be treated, and if men will set the standard of respecting the women mm -hmm. and validating or, and valuing the women, mm -hmm. if they will set the standard and lead the households mm -hmm. or, yes. and lead the communities as they submit to God, then, you know what I'm saying? A lot would be uh, prevented. And so I, it's a lot of men that I do know that are doing that, that yeah. are on the forefront, that yeah. will go knock on the door, that will go look for somebody else's ch children. Mm -hmm. They are stepping up to being examples that are providing, mm -hmm. but we need more men to do it. Yes, we do. Yes. You know, in, in the air that I came along in, and, and that's what the men did, you know, in, in the community. They were the face in the community. Mm -hmm. They were the protectors of the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and even if uh, you weren't their child, they were always, you know, around. You knew that you could not do a lot of things or get away with a lot of things because you knew that parent, even, even the, uh, the women. You know that, but that kind of society yeah. now, we're it's not the same kind of it's society that we're living in, and we don't have that kind of community like we used to have. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you know what happened. I, I know I'm not from Detroit, and I'm from you know Pennsylvania. But when I would come here to visit my grandmother and my and my mother's uh, family and my mother's sister, it, it was block clubs and yes. you know people you know that knew one another and mm -hmm. they had you don't hardly know your neighbor anymore. Right. That's right. <laughs> So, that's you know, true people don't speak to you anymore no, not at all. you know and when i came here i was like do you know because i came from a town at that time people would say they see you on the street whether they were you know whether they were strangers or not they smiled they said hello mm -hmm. people walk by you and don't speak and i'm like this was like okay i'm not used to this right <laughs> It is yeah. a missing component that we need. Yes. We need the community, you know, and not just for events and not just for, um, you know, different things and programs, but just communities to just be a family. Yeah. Right. Like it used to be. Yeah. Like to really be a family. Good to go back in the days where you can sit on the porch. Right. Right. Play tag down the streets in the middle of the right. streets. Now you don't want your kids outside. I'm telling not you. You scared. don't want you. You scared. They can't go to the playground. <laughs> they can't. We would go to the playground, be there all day long. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 <laughs> Swinging and you know seesawing and you know all of those things. We had crafts. We had different things. You can't you can't leave your kids and you know and take them to the play, uh, playground and leave them now. No. You can't. Or even go and turn your bike. Can't even ride your bike to the <laughs> store no more. Right. <laughs> You get a bike for Christmas. Okay, so you go to the basement and ride your bike. Right. You know? <laughs> Can't enjoy life anymore. No, no. And it is. It's just, you know, the, the time that we're living in is, is, is just a different time, you know. Yes. But there is hope. There is. Yes. Hope. And we thank God for for what you are doing, you know. So tell them how, you know, right now, how they, you know, people can get in touch with you if they want to be a part of, you know, the uh, what she is doing and joining up forces with her or donating to her. Um, you know, tell them how they can get in touch with you. You can get in con contact with us by um, our email address is info at lwsc3.org. Um, our website is www.lwsc3.org. Uh, we are on Facebook and um, Instagram, LWSC Community Circle. Uh, if you want to make a donation, um, we have Cash App. We're on Givelify and PayPal. All right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Michigan is ranked 10th yes. in the nation Yes. for human trafficking. Wow. 
Tell us why you think uh, we are so high in this kind of business. Do you think it's because we're in international borders or, you know, what, what do you do I you think that it? definitely plays a part, the international borders and also the auto show. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a lot of trafficking around the auto show. And because oh. it's the international borders, those are uh, the number one factors. But we have increased, um, Michigan has increased of combating human trafficking with the scenes that has been going on, the raids that has been going on as of the last couple of years, um, especially Detroit has been doing a great job with that. So they have, I think because of the other forms of trafficking mm -hmm. um, and trafficking being uh, the other name for it being prostitution, mm -hmm. even when we had the sex crime investigator come to our event um, a few years ago, mm -hmm. it was simply ignored because of the prostitution mm -hmm. and the willingness of what it appeared to be a willingness for the women to be out there. Okay. So having a better understanding of it and now looking at prostitution um, and looking at it from a victim standpoint instead of from a willing standpoint is really helping them to crack down on it and search for the pimp or the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that. Um, I, I think and I'm not real sure if um, L.A. was the number one in the nation. But uh, there are a lot of, you know, places right now where this is an infiltration of human trafficking. And let's talk about um, what you were saying about the uh, body parts. Uh, you know, what, what is going on with that particular uh, area? What, what, what is the increase in that now? That's not an area that I am knowledgeable about. Okay. Um, because my focus have been, our focus have been prevention initiative. Um, but I have seen articles where, you know, they have, they found, um, they found warehouse where body parts were being, uh, were being on their on the FBI. They've had it on their website where they talk about the body parts of being sold, mm -hmm. right? And 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 I think that these are in foreign places that they're being sold on the black markets. I'm not sure of what is happening here in Michigan as mm -hmm. it pertains to that. Okay, I know there has been, um, and I, in fact, I've been to a couple um, different meetings with the human trafficking. So people are really getting involved. I know there's yes. an, another group of uh, girls that I know uh, they're having a regular meetings uh, once a month at different churches so uh, pastors uh, if you want uh, a miracle do you go out and do um Yes, we do go out and we speak about it and raise awareness. We're actually, uh, okay. and we unite to fight with other people and organizations right, right. who are fighting against human trafficking, whether okay. they have a personal investment or just, just want to protect our children. Okay. So we have collaborated with other organizations and are putting on um, a human trafficking awareness event mm -hmm. February 29th, and okay. it's going to be at the ARC Block. The which arc block, mm -hmm. okay. Which is at one four one one Holden Street, uh huh. And that will begin at, uh, I believe it's four p.m. Okay, okay. So wow. we will raise awareness. Um, we will educate. Um, we have some youth coming from Alternatives for Girls that's going to put a skit together. We have Damsel in Defense that's going to teach some basic um, self uh, awareness mm -hmm, tips mm -hmm. so that we can be awareness of our aware of our surroundings and how to just do some basic uh, self defense, mm -hmm. um, just as preventive initiatives. Okay, so you're a Love Walk Social Community Circle. What does that do? Is, is that <laughs> so you know us as Love Walk Social Cafe okay. because before we became a nonprofit, okay. we was Love Walk Social Cafe. And so when we became nonprofit, instead of changing the completely name, I took the initials from L oh. Love Walk Social Cafe mm -hmm. and made it LWSC oh. Community oh. Circle. Oh. Okay. All right. So now what is the community circle? What is that? Do? that that's what it is. So we uh, we provide a re, a parent mommy and me reading or family literacy program um, where we are engaging the family in interactive reading, uh, music in motion and healthy snacks. We also do our monthly community awareness events where we raise awareness on human trafficking, sexual abuse, domestic violence, uh, suicide. Um, even we are partnering up with our alternative for girls going forward and we have one event being planned now for this month for teen dating um, the teen dating the violence in teen dating right okay so we do monthly community awareness events to unite the community and also to raise awareness and bridge the gap between residents and resources okay okay 
Now, one of the questions I'm, I meant to ask you, do you have or can you tell us what is the definition of human trafficking? So human trafficking is uh, the act of a person being coerced, lured, or forced for sexual la sex labor uh, or for sexual commercial sex or labor. Um, and I believe the body parts as well. Okay, okay. So a lot of, um, even in the sex trafficking industry, uh, there are some women that have been forced into labor, like, um, you know, just uh, low, I guess, income kind of uh, labor where they would work for somebody and they would take their money. Is that kind of like forced to labor? work? Um, it, we had one actual who were forced. She was actually forced to watch um, to babysit a whole lot of kids um, for no money at all. Um, there are forced labor in nail salons. There are forced labor in factories. There are forced labors in what you will actually go into and think that everything is okay. What do you mean in nail salons? Nail salons <laughs> is forced. It's forced labor. They are being forced to do this. We don't see. Are these foreign people? It could be either or. We don't see it, right? Mm. We don't see the force because right, right. In, in eyesight, it looks like you're just doing your job. We have no idea the mental abuse, the physical abuse, the threats, mm -hmm. right? The threats of killing your family, the threats of whatever you've been exposed to before you get to that point of actually doing the labor. Mm -hmm. We don't see that. All we see is you're doing your job. You're doing your job. Mm. One of the um, one of the survivors and the young lady who uh, joins with us as wow. we fight against human trafficking, she was a stripper. She willingly went into the strip club to do this because she needed to, you know, survive and make money. Mm -hmm. She did not know that once she got in there that she was going to be trafficked and forced to do it without receiving the money for it. So are they, are they actually doing human trafficking in the in the um strip clubs itself yes. or is this after the girls leave the strip club oh no being in there the money that they you would think that they're making they're making a very low percentage of it then they are forced to do parties and i'm not saying this is not this does not mean all of them right, right. but i have heard testimonies that of people strippers who have been into the strip club mm -hmm. and was forced to have sex for money and only received if anything a very low percentage right. of it so the pimp is in the strip club too. Yeah. And a lot of them are probably some of the owners. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Wow. So it's, you know, you think that on the eyesight it looked like everything is okay and this person is willingly doing it. But you paint a smile. How many times we painted a smile to go to work and we didn't want to go to work? Right. Absolutely. Let's just keep it simple, yeah. right? Yes. We yes. do that all the time. So yes. it's not hard to paint a smile when you really don't want to be here doing this. Yes. Right. Yeah. I know girls that have, you know, told me that, that mm -hmm. have worked in the strip club, and that's what they said. They drive up to that place, and, and every day they would just, you know, regret that they had to go in there to do what they were doing. And um, I guess they had just got caught up into it, the money, um, you know, the attention, mm -hmm. and all of the other things that go along with it, and uh, they would be in there and, and really didn't want to be in there. Yes. Well, we just really, I mean, it, it, uh, we just thank God for what you are doing. You are a miracle. Is that how you got your name? Well, how did you get your name? It's how really no story. <laughs> <laughs> did you, were you a miracle? <laughs> you know what? It's really no story. I said that because I was full term. I was the third child. So it's really no okay. miraculous story other okay. than we're all God's <laughs> miracles. And I was just one who got the name. <laughs> I said Amen. my mama was on too much Demerol, and she was like, it's a miracle. It's over. <laughs> well, well, you are doing a miraculous work, uh, what yes. God has given you um, to be able to uh, care for, to love, uh, to nurture. Uh, I know that you are also a coach. Yes. So mm -hmm. you get a chance to use your coaching skills with some it's of the It's all the same. Yeah. Ministry. All of it goes together. Wow. It, it's just, just all of it goes together. Um, just being in the marketplace gives me a greater reach. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And that's my calling. Yes. My calling has always been in the streets. Yeah. My calling and my passion has always been for the throwaways, yeah. the rejects, yes. the underdogs. That right. has always been my passion. Even when you were younger. Even when I was younger. <laughs> Why? Because that's what I was. Mm. So I, I strongly believe that whatever God delivered you from. Yeah. Is That's where you're it. meant to. You have the keys to That's deliver it. and to go back and pull some back somebody else, body else yes. out. Yeah. And so I know what it's like to be rejected. Mm. I know what it's like to be overlooked. Mm. I know what it's like to be abused and hurt. Mm. I know what it's like to want to do right, but you're so messed up in the inside that you can't. So how did you come through, you know, your deliverance miracle? Honestly, it was through the grace of God because I've been through so much. I've been sexually abused multiple times. I've been, I've attempted suicide. Mm. I've been mentally and emotionally abused. I've been on my own since I was 16. And yet, God kept my heart from being bitter. And yet, even when, before I knew him, mm. he kept me. And he kept my heart and my mind intact. I've been through so much that I should have lost my mind. Mm -hmm. And so at the very least, I am the sacrifice. Yes. At the very least, because of what he allowed me to survive from, mm, mm, mm. I am the sacrifice. And that's my most reasonable service. That's the least that I can do. Yes, it's to be a more. vessel mm, mm, to pull somebody else out of darkness. Mm, 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 mm. That's the least I can do. Yes. You preaching. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> but I do want to share a couple of signs. Right. Mm -hmm. Of what you can look for. Um, yes, please do. And kind of somebody being trafficked. OK. Um, if you see bruises or other signs of physical abuse and these signs does not mean that this is happening. Right. But it should alarm you. Um, are there signs of psychological abuse? Is the person submissive or fearful? Is the person being controlled by somebody else? Is the person being deprived of food, water, sleep? or other life necessities? Is the person allowed to be in public alone? Mm. Can the person freely contact friends or family? Is the person a minor engaged in commercial sex? So that should be the number one sign, right? That there's sex trafficking going on. So if you're paying for sex, men, don't do it, okay? <laughs> Does the minor appear to be in a relationship with a much older person? because that is a form of trafficking. Mm -hmm. And our time, or the millennials will call it sugar daddies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's another word for sex trafficking. That it would, may not be forced, but it's coerced. It's lured because of money. And at the end of the day, if the money is exchanged, it's sexual exploitation. It's commercial sex. I was just going to add another thing. It's like I work in healthcare, so even in healthcare, um, a lot of times the um, person who is over the young person, you know, trafficking them, they'll come to their appointments with them or bring them in because sometimes, you know, they got to keep the, keep them up so that they can continue to use them. Um, but working in a in a healthcare setting, there is different alarms. Yes, we look for those symptoms and signs that Miracle talked about. But also another sign is the male person or the female that's bringing them in, they do all the talking for them. So mm. that person sits there and it's like, okay, it raises mm -hmm. a flag as to where, right. okay, we have to think of a way to get them out of there. So sometimes, you know, they'll say, you know, um, pardon me, this person needs to go for, you know, an x-ray or they need to go right. to another, you know, part of the area just so that we can make contact with that individual to say, hey, Absolutely. what's going on? Sometimes they don't want to speak, but sometimes when you separate them from that person, right. it has been times where people have been saved from the trafficking because they've been separated from their abuser. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So, you know, um, for, for my listening and viewing audience, that's one of the things. That we have to be aware. Yes. We have to have awareness when you are in places and you are seeing things. And if your gut is telling you something is going on yes. here, Definitely. I just don't feel right about this situation. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, just feel that something is not right. And so, you know, you just have to be aware if you think it's not right. And I, I want you to give that 1-800 um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking uh, line. Okay. 
And so you you have to you know you have to speak up. Yes. If you see something, you have to say something. I know there was an incident one time of uh, the young uh, girl was on the airplane being trafficked uh, back to United States, mm-hmm. and the stewardess yes helped her out. Yeah, yes. and she said, you know, to the little girl, I guess when she finally because the man was sitting there, so she just couldn't. She made some kind of eye contact with her, so she went to the bathroom and wrote on the mirror, mm-hmm. "If you're in trouble, say yes." So when the girl went to the bathroom, she mm-hmm. was able to, to write on the mirror, yes. you know, that she was in trouble. And so when the plane landed, they had the police waiting on the man mm-hmm. to arrest him. Yes. But he was bringing her back here for sex trafficking. Wow. Young girl. Yes, yes, I remember that. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, it's things like that. Like you were saying, um, mm-hmm. you know, we just have to be aware um, if you see something and you, can, like you say, it can separate them from their mm-hmm. uh, abuser, right. then you can get a chance to maybe get at least a little enough information that mm-hmm. you can call uh, the, you know, the authorities, authorities to help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to so what's, what's that uh, human uh, trafficking, uh, sex trafficking line? Okay. If you believe you are a victim of human trafficking or may have information about a potential trafficking situation, please contact the National Human Trafficking Hotline, and that number is 1-800-877-9111. Give that one more time. 1-800-877-9111. And that's um, located on the Polaris page. Okay. All right. So you have that number, and if there is ever an opportunity where you feel that it's something that you feel that it's a human trafficking situation or if you feel that somebody in any way is being abused, um, you know, call that number. Even if you don't know if it's sex trafficking, just call the number. Um, let the, the authorities figure it out, but at least you have done your job as making awareness to it and, and potentially could save somebody's life. Yes. You know, we, do, we, don't, we don't know that even in situations like this, girls have committed suicide. Uh, they've, you know, they've killed themselves or whatever the case may be because of the fact that they are so distraught about mm-hmm. this. They don't want to be a part of this, but yet they're being forced against their will to do things that they necessarily don't want to do. So you could uh, save somebody's life uh, by calling this number and being aware of your surroundings. And women, be careful when you're out there. Be careful about, you know, don't be on your cell phone talking and, yeah. you know, not <laughs> being attention. Okay. paying yes. attention, yes. you know, and, and not being aware because the times that we are living in, as the Bible say, the days are evil. Yes. The days are evil, and we have to be aware of our uh, our women, our children, um, and like you said, even the young boys. I mean, they've been prostituted mm-hmm. um, yes. and gays. You know, because of you know their their situation, they've been prostituted against their will. So we have to take a uh, a, a, a more of a aware authority over things that are going on now in the world right now. So uh, miracle, I I really just thank you for you know what you are doing and um, if the community that wants to get involved, please uh, give them your number one more time because you do some things where you, I know you have been on uh, uh, Facebook and you were talking about you needed beds for you know for people so they can even donate goods like that. Yes, yes, because as we open up more homes, that's all we all, always need bedding and appliances, you know, just to get started. Um, so any. If if anybody have any working in, in good condition um, okay. appliances or uh, beds, we prefer new beds. With okay, right, yeah, because you don't want to get bed, something bed. Right, 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 right. Um, but yes, those things always come in handy for us. Okay, all right. And is there an address or anything that takes? So no, we won't give out the address to okay. the homes. But our office is located in the Kennedy Building at one eight one two one East Eight Mile and Suite one hundred five. Or they can reach out to our board members, which is Helen Clark, myself, Danielle uh, Brown, or Kathleen Hurd, and any one of us could coordinate picking it up okay mm-hmm. all right so if you have uh, you know like she said good useful uh new you know uh gently used on um, clothes and things like that as well yes yes, yes. okay yes and at age groups again age groups are from 18 to 23 from 18 to 23 um, now, you only do women at this point. Is that correct? At this point, yes. But we okay. are going to open up a home for the young men as well. Because okay. it's youth who are um, 
boys 18 to 23 is homeless as well. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to just limit it to just women, but okay. it's just easier for us to deal with the women right now. Right. Now. <laughs> okay. All right. So if you have any of those things and you want to give uh, to her again, uh, you know, get in touch with her. The number she has given you, she's open to receive some of those new items, the beddings and, you know, anything that can be a blessing to her at this point. Uh, so she can continue the work of the Lord that she's doing in the marketplace. So I, I really do applaud you, um, you know, because that's one of the things that I talk about as far as the marketplace connection. Uh, that's why I do what I do is because of the fact that I try to bring awareness to what is going on outside of the four walls of the church. You yes. know, we have to be aware. Uh, a lot of times, you know, as, as believers, you know, we go to church, we come back home, and we're blind to a lot of things yeah. mm -hmm. that are really going on in the world yes. because we don't open up ourselves to it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, my greatest pulpit has always been, you know, the marketplace Amen. Yes. Amen. and, and a, making awareness to what is going on so the people of God can also, you know, get involved. I mean, you know, I know we love the Lord and we go to church and we pray and all of that, but it, it comes a time when you got to work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the labor is outside. Yes, 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 yes. The labor is outside. Come on you now. Can't just, <laughs> you can't just sit there and That's pray. It. You got to do it. something about it. it. Yeah. He, he will bless the work of your hands. Yes, And absolutely. sometimes uh, you are the answer to the prayer. And yes. so in prayer is not just asking for the help. That's if you're right. able to do it, you be the answer to be the, the prayer. Be the answer to yeah. the prayer. Be the answer to you the know? prayer. And so that's why we do what we do is that we try to bring awareness to things that are going on in a natural way. Yes. Right? Because I believe that God wants us to be blessed naturally, spiritually, you know, um, uh, as far as our, our thinking and everything that we do, you Absolutely. know. And in this 2020 year that we're that we're in, which is a year of vision and seeing clearly, we have to see clearly. Yes. And we have to see uh, the needs clearly that other people have and being aware of what's going on. So we've got to open up our eyes. We can't walk around, you know, we can't be asleep anymore. No. <laughs> I just got a um, an inbox box that that number for some reason is not working okay and so i want to give this other number that they call, actually called yeah, and verified. I, know I called one yesterday too and it wasn't working so yeah. one eight 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 three seven three seven eight 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 yeah that's okay. the one that that's the one that because that first number the eight five five uh was the number i called it yesterday and it wasn't working it wasn't yeah working. Mm -hmm. so that is the number and that's from the department of attorney general okay okay now, again, she is having an event on Saturday, February the 29th. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that is going to be from 4 to 7 p.m. And it is going to be at the Art Block. Yep, the Art at Block. At 1411 Holden Street in Detroit. So, uh, and this is your number? Yes, they can, that's my cell phone number. They can okay, the 734-858-8264. So if you'd like to go and you'd like to be a part of uh, what is going on to unite it to fight against human trafficking, okay? Mm -hmm. Please make yourself available. I am going to try to be there uh, myself. Okay. So I can, you know, see what's going on, be a part of what's going on as well, okay? Sounds good. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Amen. Well, I just thank God for you guys. Guys, I really, really do. Uh, this is one of her board members, yes. and we thank God for you. We got another one that's sitting over there, and we just thank God for the house of hope yes. that is bringing hope, that's bringing love, that is just bringing, you know, uh, to women and giving them that opportunity again to start life again. Yes. Okay? Um, you might have been, even if we might have somebody out there right now mm -hmm. that might be listening in some kind of way. I don't know. I don't want to take it for granted. You might be in a situation right now where you are being trafficked. Mm -hmm. Okay? I want you to know God loves you, first of all, yes. and that you can get out of this situation. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is still hope. And so if, if there is any way that you can, that you can get to a telephone, I want you to call that number. And I want you to get in touch with Miracle NORAD. Okay, and if you just can't, if you can take that number down again, it's one eight eight three seven three seventy eight eighty eight, and get some help. Yes. You can get out of this. Yes. yes. Okay, you can get out of this, and so we are here to help in any kind of way that we can. Get in touch with her. Get in touch with that number, and get out while you can. Yes. Okay, and God loves you, yes. and He has a plan for your life, and is good and not evil. So he can bring you to an expected end. All right. Well, ladies, I thank, thank so God much. for you. And thank, thank you. God for the work that you are doing. 
And we are definitely just really, we're, we're going to be praying for you, and we're going to be praying for the work of the, uh, that the Lord has put in your hands, the work of God in your hands. It is great. Thank you. Amen. Eyes Thank haven't you. seen, ears have not heard Amen. the things that God is going to do with this ministry. Amen. 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 Praise God for you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yes, right. absolutely. Amen. I am glad to have you. Well, this has been the Marketplace Connection, and I hope that you have gained some knowledge today that you have not known about the human trafficking, uh, you know, business that's going on, things that are going on right now. And we just want you to be more aware. Uh, we're going to have some other people that are going to be coming on. We're going to be talking about this this, uh, this year because this is something that needs to be talked about. This yes. is something that needs to be exposed. Yes. And, if, mm -hmm. and if it means that, you know, taking it to the airwaves or, or whatever we have to do and doing our part to do it, we are going to do it. Yes. So we thank God again for you, for you all and the House of Hope. And we thank God for the life, um, you know, that you are doing right now. Miracle, we bless your life. We really do. Thank we you. We bless your life. And so this has been a Marketplace Connection. We will see you again next week. And we want you to have a wonderful weekend. And oh, before I go, I can't forget about my book. I can forget about it. <laughs> Every weekend. <laughs> this is my book, The Amen Sister. We want you to pick up this copy because this book is a book of hope, empowerment, and encouragement for women around the world. It is blended with my testimony. And it is a book that will bring hope to the hopeless, faith to the faithless, love to the loveless, life to the lifeless positioning you to win it is amen sister you can pick it up in barnes and noble or amazon or you can see me or y'all scribe okay y'all scribe publishing and we just want you to pick it up because it is a book that is blended with my testimony of loss uh victories and uh things that god has done in my life that where i am right now is not where i started so I thank God for what he has done and what he is doing. And so we want you to pick the book up. We thank you again. We will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. We are signing off. Thank you. Have everyone. a great day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank Amen. You.